that Monte Carlo win, it's so iconic. It's, it's, it's gone down in, in the sort of annals of motorsport history. Does it feel like it all happened yesterday? <laughs> Not quite, Manny. <laughs> I've deteriorated a bit since 50 years, but no, it's uh, little did I think 50 years ago it would still be being celebrated, and I would still be around, in fact. In those days, the event was, uh, it was much bigger than it is now. It was a much longer, tougher event, and people started, didn't they, from all over the world and, and converged on Monte Carlo. Well, rallying it was completely different in those days because um, now you've got WRC and what have you, but, and it's motorsport. <coughs> in those days, it wasn't motorsport. You were actually driving for your country. It was much more like Olympics, and, uh, you know, there was no communications like there are now. Therefore, the Monte Carlo Rally was front-page news because we were still a commercial war, really, with... Uh, the other countries in Europe, we were trying to sell British beef, British butter, British engineering, and uh, it was a big thing for a British car to win the event uh, from that point of view. It's completely different from just motorsport. And it made you a household name, didn't it? I, re I remember you saying that when you got back, you were on Saturday night at the Palladium, which had countless million viewers with Bruce Forsyth, wasn't it? You, right. were, you, were a, you were, It made you a, an absolute superstar. Yeah, it was even better than the X Factor or the dancing program. That's not difficult. <laughs> <laughs> but the dancing program, mind you, the girl that just won the dancing one is much prettier than me. But it was good fun to be on Palladium. And there were only two television channels then, and it was very many million viewers. So everybody knew <clears throat> that Minnie had won the Monte. <clears throat> Did you think you'd have a good chance ahead of the event? You were against some, some much bigger, more powerful cars, weren't you? Yes, well, uh, Stuart Turner, I saw him here, was our team manager, and a brilliant man he is, too. Uh, did we think we'd win it? I, I don't think we did, no. We were quite surprised, um, because we were up against much more powerful machinery. We did very good practicing, and we had a wonderful team. Henry Lydon was my great co-driver, who's sadly no longer with us. Henry was terrific. We had the greatest team of engineers, mechanics there were in rallying at that time. And uh, we beat cars, uh, companies with a lot more money and spending Mercedes and all the great Citroens and uh, even Saab. And it was, a, we surprised ourselves really, but I think we deserved to win because if you look at the umbrella of work that went into it, and I was lucky to be the driver. The marketing opportunities that came about after that were huge, weren't they? Yes, I, I think, I don't know that BMC in those days took, took full advantage of it. I think it happened by accident more, the fact that the news and people, the Mini, it's interesting, you know, uh, Alec Isagoni sort of designed the Mini as the district nurse's car, I think he called it. But then it became, uh, we, we, before we won the Monte, we won the Tour de France the year before, 1963. And the French fell in love with the car because it was on television and it was beating the big cars, the bigger four powerful cars, so it became like a David and Goliath thing. Yeah. And uh, p people got a heart for it. And uh, I mean, the Mini, the wor that's why I think BMW have been very wise and sensible of taking the Mini brand, because it, it means n not so much in Russia or China, but I in Europe, the people said, oh, yeah, my granny had a Mini. Yeah. There was a lot of excitement about the new Mini uh, and the BMW ownership and coming back to competition, <coughs> but it, it didn't work. There was a lot of excitement and interest, and then it just just died a death, didn't it? Well, you, you, you're saying that. I, I, it's sad that the David Richards Pro Drive thing didn't work, but that was, what, uh, two or three years ago. And uh, things have changed a lot since then. The WRC thing, I'm not sure that that's working so well. So it was a series of things that, they, it's very sad, yes, because they had Chris Meek as a driver, who's now, thank goodness, got a works drive with Citroen, and um, they had Danny Sordo, and they had a very, and, and the Pro Drive team was fantastic. Still are, you know, even without the backing of BMW, but BMW is a, is a big company, it's political, and they made the decision, and I, you know, they're running, it's their money, but they're a very successful company. It is sad for motorsport that that didn't happen. Yeah. You're obviously keeping your ear to the ground in, in, in what's going on in the current WRC. What do you think, what do you make of it at the moment? There's a bit of a renewed feeling of enthusiasm for it, isn't there, with Chris 
Meek and Elvin Evans and manufacturers coming back in. I think the sport's in a good place. Well, I think Chris Meek's terrific. Uh, he's, uh, I, I hope he does well. I, I, I think he's a wonderful driver. I sat beside him. I think he's very competent. He's a very good uh, person to have in a team. He speaks well. He, he behaves. He's a, he's a clever guy. Um, I must say, I, I, I think I'm a quite amazed that the WRC has kept going the way it does because it gets very little publicity unless you're a motorsport. Uh, geek and follow it and uh, I must say if I was owned a car factory I don't know that the, the money that it costs per annum is good value for advertising I don't know it needs to be on the telly too doesn't it well it, and it's it's expensive and logistically difficult to film because you need a lot of cameras in a lot of places to capture the story of the rally don't you yes I think that, that I mean David Richards tried very hard for 10 years or so to to make it work, he really did, and uh, even that didn't seem to get the audiences that required. But there's an awful lot of television on, an awful lot of channels, and an awful, there's too many chasing too few, really, yeah. from that point of view. Yeah. Now, of course, since you uh, retired from driving, you've been busy, haven't you, in uh, in all sorts of different uh, disciplines. What are you doing at the show this year? Well, I, I work for a company called Magar that make locking wheel nuts, and we supply the motor industry. And I've worked with them for 20 years. Um, and we've got a stand here. And uh, it's very enjoyable. American-German operation. Very, very good company. I, that's, I don't like to put my name to things that aren't good. And I only work with people I like, I try to say. And uh, I don't want to lose my reputation. And that's, that's my, I won't say part-time job, but not full-time. Because you were, you were very big in the automotive aftermarket, weren't you, for many years. The, the Paddy Hopkirk brand was pretty huge. Well, it has come back a bit. We're, with motorsport, um, uh, mini sport, at least up in uh, the north of England, we're doing a range of products. They're a very nice company. They do a lot of mini parts. And they've done a range of products with my name on them. And um, Chris Harper, who runs that, is a good guy. And that's working quite well. And... Um, I've done, th well, sorry, my charity skids, I was going to mention. Yeah, I was just going to say, let me uh, you can hold that up and get some, try and get some pictures of that. So um, uh, tell us about skids. What are you, what's, uh, what's the thinking behind this? Well, skids is a charity that helps underprivileged young people to become technicians or mechanics or whatever you like to call them. And uh, it operates in High Wycombe. And uh, Ross Braun, I'm going to name drop now, Ross Braun's a patron along with me. And it's going well. And rather than just begging for money all the time, uh, there's an opportunity of making number plates in this country, which I seized with a conjunction with a Spanish company called Samart. And we've set them up to make and sell number plates and sell the equipment and machinery. Uh, it's only just going to start next month, really. So. It's very important, isn't it, that we nurture the next generation of talent. And I don't mean drivers. I mean engineers, technicians, <coughs> mechanics. There's got to be good ways of doing that, hasn't there? Well, I think the apprenticeship thing having disappeared is very sad because uh, people say to me, the motor industry is finished in this country. I supply most of the car manufacturers here and it's far from, it's very, very buoyant as everybody now I think is beginning to realize, but we are looking for more engineers. The culture in schools of sort of asking people to become uh, lawyers or accountants or bankers, we make a lot more easy money. Uh, is I hope changing and we want to get girls into engineering too and I mean engineering if you at a dinner party you say I'm an engineer here is not good but in Germany or in Japan it's considered very talented and I would like to see that culture change here really but it is changing and I saw on the news this morning we've invented some jet airplane that will go to Australia in four hours and it's been invented down in Oxford and uh, that, that, that's true. And if you look, come on, the Formula One, we, we are the Silicon Valley of yeah. Formula One, a motorsport, and, and David Richards' pro drive is not doing too bad a job either. The MIA announced yesterday that British motorsport industry generated £9 billion worth of sales. You know, we are the best at this, aren't we? Yes, I think it's terrific. And uh, we keep knocking ourselves, you know. I mean, and, and, the, 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 you know, I see the Jaguar sales in Germany are up 39% or something, and Jaguar Land Rover, what a great 
success. And, and I was down there this week. And uh, it's just, I had to queue up to get in. It's so busy. It's just wonderful. Good. And this is a perfect place, isn't it, for us to showcase our ability on so many levels. Absolutely. I mean, the engineering section here, these guys making stuff for Formula One and rally cars is just mind-blowing. Paddy, I've got to let you go. I know you're going to be busy uh, for the rest of the day. Thank you for talking to us. Uh, always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Paddy Hopkirk. Thank you, Paddy.